If you're researching solar power options for your home, and you're wondering how much solar capacity do you need to take on electric vehicle charging at home, then you're going to want to watch this video because I'm going to show you the calculations and how to determine exactly how much solar capacity you need to cover your electric vehicle driving. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And for the past eight years, I've been helping families get their home set up to survive a loss of the electric grid. And on Solar Surge, we use renewable energy, solar, and battery storage technology to achieve that goal. Uh, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, you'll find educational videos related to home emergency backup and renewable energy technology, um, even some videos about electric vehicle technology, especially as it pertains to providing backup power to your home. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be answering a question that I've, I've received quite a few times recently, which is how much solar power do I need if I'm gonna be charging my electric vehicle at home? You know, one of the greatest ways that you can increase your energy independence beyond just you know, knocking out your electric bill or having emergency backup power in the home, but another great way is to have a vehicle that you can charge directly using your renewable power source. So you've, you, you know, again, Whenever you can eliminate counterparty risk, whether it's from the fuel company, the power company, the gas station, you know, the more of your energy needs that you can take care of on your own, that's really what we're about here at Solar Surge is helping you to achieve that self-sufficiency. But a question that I often get is, you know, Joe, how do I know how many solar panels or how much solar power do I need if I'm going to be charging my electric vehicle at home? So I'm going to show you that today. All right, so there's four things that you're going to need to know in order to make this calculation. Those items are the range of your electric vehicle, the battery capacity of your electric vehicle measured in kilowatt hours, your daily commuting distance, and then finally your hours of ideal sunlight or what's called insulation in the solar industry. How many hours of ideal sunlight do you receive at your location? And this is going to vary state by state. Now in today's example, we're going to be using the popular Tesla Model 3 dual motor uh, for a home in Florida. And so those key items are the range of the vehicle is 358 miles, the battery capacity with the long range battery is 73.5 kilowatt hours. In this example, we'll use a daily commuting distance of 50 miles. So that should be getting you to and from work to the grocery store or what have you. And then we're going to use the average insulation of five hours per day, which is a pretty safe estimate if you're talking about southern states like Florida, Texas, Arizona, and whatnot. Okay, so the first step is to determine your kilowatt hours energy consumption per mile. And to, to determine that is a very simple division, divide 73 and a half kilowatt hours, which is your battery capacity, into your 358 miles, which is your vehicle range, which gives you a figure of 0 0.2053 kilowatt hours per mile. So for every mile you drive in your electric vehicle, you're consuming 0.2053 kilowatt hours of energy. Once you know your energy consumed per mile, you're simply going to multiply that by your daily commute in miles. So if you're driving 50 miles per day and you're consuming 0.2053 kilowatt hours per mile, that equals a total energy consumption of 10.3 kilowatt hours per day. So that's your total electrical consumption for electric vehicle travel. And now finally in step three, we determine the solar system size, which is another simple division calculation. You take your 10.3 kilowatt hours per day electric vehicle travel consumption, divide it by five hours ideal sunlight per day, which is a good number for Florida, and I'll show you how to find it for other states. But in this example, that yields 2.1 kilowatts of solar capacity. So if you take your total energy consumption, divide it by hours of ideal sunlight per day, it'll give you a total figure in kilowatts, in this example, 2.1 kilowatts or 2,100 watts. So that's how much solar capacity you would need, assuming a 100% efficient system, that's how much solar capacity you would need is a 2.1 kilowatt system. Now, I said if this is a perfectly ideal system, which these are usually not, there's gonna be a little bit of energy lost in discharging and charging the battery. 
You know, remember, anytime there's an energy conversion, whether you're stepping up the voltage, stepping down the voltage, converting from AC to DC or vice versa, there's always a little bit of energy lost in that conversion. Most of it is lost as heat. And so when you're charging the battery, that process is usually about a 95% efficient process. 95% of the energy that goes into charging actually gets stored and retained in the battery that can be used later. And then the other thing is that your solar system is generally never going to be 100% efficient. So there's, there's conversions in the, the inverter system, as I just mentioned. Um, there's also slight inefficiencies with how your house might be set up. You know, a perfectly ideal solar setup would be solar panels facing directly south with a tilt angle equal to your degrees north latitude, assuming you're, you're on the northern hemisphere here like we are. But most homes are not going to provide that 100% ideal scenario. So there's a little bit that's lost based on just the tilt and orientation of, of the roof. It's called the tilt and orientation factor. So you have to discount slightly there. Um, as well as there may be a shading loss as well, you know, depending on if you have tall trees around or if there's going to be shade cast on your roof during various parts of the day. So this video is really just to give you an idea of what the basic calculation is to determine how much solar you need. Um, if I were you, I would increase this by 20% just to account for any conversion losses and any inefficiencies. So instead of a 2.1 kilowatt system in this example, I might say, you know, go for a 2.5 kilowatt system, you know, just to, to cover for some of those conversion losses. Well, folks, this has been a presentation of how much solar power do I need to power my electric vehicle. Um, as always, if, if you're getting good value from these videos that we're putting out on the channel, please be sure to click on the like button. You know, I know I say the like button all the time, but you know, there are so many videos that are published on YouTube now that, you know, if the, the platform doesn't see people interacting and liking and sharing the videos, then it's just going to, you know, move on to something else. Um, also, if this is good information for you, click on the subscribe button as well. That way, as we publish new videos, they'll, they'll show up on your homepage or they'll, they'll show up on your subscription feed so that you can keep up with us. Well, folks, thanks again for tuning into the Solar Surge channel today. Also, be sure to tune back into us uh, next week, Thursday, November 11th at 5 p.m., I'm going to be interviewing Zane Jan, the CEO and founder of Better Earth Solar. And Zane is going to be teaching us how he grew his solar business to a nine-figure business in less than two years. So for all you solar professionals and solar salespeople out there, this is a great learning opportunity for you. It's also our, going to be our first live stream event that we're doing on the Solar Surge channel. And it'll give you an opportunity to ask questions and have your questions answered in real time. So free tuition, guys. If you want to learn how to grow your businesses, please tune into that live stream event next Thursday, November 11th at 5 p.m. Well, folks, I thank you again for tuning in to the Solar Surge channel today. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.